immensely. And I'm starting to learn more. And I'm starting, this is what I remember how we were talking about this. And I said, I can tell that this one here uh, knows these boys. It's just a thing, you know, I, I have street um, knowledge too, you know, uh, because of my, my past and my experience and things that I've lived through, I can kind of check people out and, and, and kind of get that vibe off of them. And the way that this last report came, and, and you guys won't be able to hear it or see it. I can't play it for you because I'm on um, YouTube live. Oh, I might be able to pull it up on my phone. But the way the video was done, it almost implied Camille may have actually been part of the, 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 the three as an extension of the three, almost the way that they alleged this, because uh, when the 12 year old was giving a statement, which they had portions of that statement in this particular article, um, he basically said that he was forced to kill her because the other two um, said that she was going to snitch on him. So he had and if he didn't kill her, that they were going to kill his family. That's what the 12 year old stated. Now, I, I don't know if I believe that or not. I think he was a willing participant. But there was a portion of that that they said after they killed um, the, that. And I may have gotten this wrong. So I don't I want to be very cautious about this. Uh, but it, it almost implied that when they killed Layla and threw her out of the car, Camille was still sitting on the back of the car of her own free volition, which makes me very concerned that one of the victims could have actually been not only a victim, but part of this scheme for robbery and, and may have actually helped set it up. Uh, but I don't want to say that because it, it's hard because she's a victim. She's dead. And I don't want to sully her name. But it's not me. It was this article. And let me see if I can pull it up. I think it might be right here. Because, quote, she was going to snitch on us all. They took so that is the that that is the the, the, the part that, that's making me feel like Camille Quarles was part of this because they're talking about shooting two victims and her being on, on the trunk of her own free volition. They're, they just killed two people. They killed um, Layla, uh, Layla, and the male, and the male victim. They keep calling him a male victim. I don't know why they're not releasing his, his identity. Maybe the family ha has requested them not to. Um, Mandy, Mandis, you just was re received a um, gifted membership from S Mac. Thank you, S Mac, and God bless you for gifting a membership to one of our audience members. So, do you see where I'm coming? Where I'm going with this? It, it seems like Camille, based upon that that statement, and maybe it was um, poorly worded. Potentially, I I'm not sure if it was poorly worded, um, and, and that wasn't their intent, and she had no. Um, you know, she wasn't with them to set this up or anything. But based upon that article, that news clip, to me, it sounds like that this Camille may have been part of this robbery. And the only reason why she was killed was because they were concerned about her snitching on them. And the boy were dumped out of the car. So she knew that they were killed. And she still left with them until they killed her, ultimately killed her and put her in the trunk of the car and dumped the car in, in the lake. That's concerning for me. And this should be, you know, this should be a lesson to all the young ladies out there. You don't trust anybody. And you damn sure don't stand up next to somebody that just killed somebody. You, are, you will be a target. They don't, if they can take a life, they have no problem taking your life. They will take your life lickety split. You trust no one. And if somebody does something wrong, you get the hell out of Dodge. You don't hang out with them and pray that they, they save you by, because you're friends with them. I mean, I don't know. It just, this is not sitting well with me with the Camille Corals thing. It just is not. It's starting to feel, oh, thank you, uh, Julie, for another membership. Turn back time. You were gifted a membership from Julie. So hopefully uh, if you're in the house, please don't forget to tell her. Thank you. But it also, it also concerns me because when I did look at Camille Quarles, and, and granted, I am judging a book by its cover, and I, I can, you know, that, that's my, that's what I do. I look at people and try to decide things about them, right? It's my opinion and my opinion alone, but I felt bad when I brought her picture up that, I think it was just a few days ago, and I said, this right here, this is the one that I believe was connected to, like I say, we have a good batting average here on the Bullhorn Betty. We really pick up on a lot of uh, stuff that other people may or may not pick up on, but I pegged that girl, um, and I said, you know, this one seems like she would be the, the connection uh, between them because of the way her hair was uh, styled, the way she put her makeup on, the way she she presented herself in that photo really did tell, tell a lot, uh, you know, and, and the photo of, uh, of Layla Silvernail, you know, said a lot about her as well. So you can get a lot and sense a lot from these things, and I kind of knew, uh, because I went to school too, uh, but I kind of knew who the who's are, and it just seemed like there was something there with her. I think it was because they seem like an odd friendship you know the the, the camille kind of looked um you know like layla seemed uh, her, between like her hair the way she smiled everything seems like she came from um a, a good home with you know some sort of money you know maybe not a lot of money but definitely middle class or upper middle class not like elite or anything like that i don't know she might be elite i don't know but she seems to carry herself better in photos and appear in appearance uh, the other one looks like she's more of the you know lower middle class and and, and stuff like that the way she can so it's just an odd friendship like the, the way that they dressed um didn't coincide with each other we know in high school there's clickiness right and so usually you have all the people that are kind of the same right you have the jocks the jocks kind of hang out you've got the um the alternative group they all kind of dress the same and hang out you've got the uh what, what they call i mean i was I wasn't a prep, you know, they do have preppies. They have the preps that, that dress nice and, and look uh, a certain way, but there's clickiness. And if you notice anything about high school, when you're in that click, they kind of all have the same type of appearance. They, they're not, they don't appear the same. That's not what I'm saying, but they all seem to have the type of appearance. And there was a big contrast in the appearance from Layla and Camille that just didn't seem like they were uh, natural friends. It is they were childhood friends of sorts. I don't know if that's true or not. That's just what I had assumed. But now that I'm seeing that she, she was on the back of that car of her own free volition, but that again is in accordance with one of the suspects. Is, is in accordance with the 12 year old suspect, by the way. So is that true? Is it not true? I don't want to spread misinformation, but as you heard, that did come from Fox 35. And um, you know, I would think that they had uh, vetted that information, but even if they didn't vet the information, that is what was being said by the 12 year old. So that's still a factual statement that the 12 year old said. Now the statement itself may not be factual, but it's definitely a factual statement that came from the 12 year old. 